Have a fun video you'd like to see featured on NCW Life? Email us at newsphotos at ncwlife.com. It's time for NCW Life News on the NCW Life channel. The latest from the Wenatchee Valley and North Central Washington with Steve Hare, Grant Olson, and sports with Eric Grandstrom. Good Tuesday evening and welcome to NCW Life News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top stories, let's take a quick look outside our very wet weather window today. And uh, yeah, rain showers all day long here in north central Washington. And if it makes you feel better, we weren't the only ones. The entire state of Washington inundated with rain throughout the area. And I'll tell you what, as we take a look at our forecast, we are just seeing a st series of storms moving through. Our first one today will happen tonight as well. We'll stay with about a 50 to 60 percent chance of rain on Wednesday. And then a bit of a break on your Thanksgiving, although we will see some windy conditions on Thursday. Friday and Saturday will be drier, a bit cooler too, considering we'll jump into the mid 50s on Thursday. And then more rain and snow over the mountain passes on Sunday as you are traveling home. So keep that in mind. I mentioned those gusty Thanksgiving Day winds. Uh, make sure your trash cans are put away and all unsecured lawn furniture if you have any of that still in your backyard. So travel could be a little bit tricky as you come home from Thanksgiving, but but not bad as you make your way to your Thanksgiving destination. Your complete weather forecast coming up a little bit later on. And for those watching on our Facebook, tune in to Local Tell Channel 12 or Charter Channel 19 or stream us live at ncwlife.com for the full evening newscast tonight. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. The Community Foundation of North Central Washington has awarded over $200,000 in regional impact grants to 28 local nonprofits. And the Chelan County PUD considers LED streetlights. But first, we begin tonight. It was nearly a packed house in the Wenatchee Convention Center Grand Ballroom Monday afternoon as hundreds gathered to celebrate the life of Bob Parlett. The longtime Wenatchee attorney, cherry grower, and outdoor proponent was remembered for his charity, his passion, his love of flying, and family. One of his favorites, and mine too, was never let the truth get in the way of a good story. And he said, let me take Grant, Grant's our son, up for a ride. And he said, if you would, would you get a picture of me landing on my airstrip? So he gave me his video camera, and I went out, and I was standing by the airstrip, and he came in, and I, I could, even I could tell he was a little bit high. But anyway, he came in, came in, flared, bounced about 40 feet in the air, <laughs> bounced again about 40 feet in the air, aborted the landing and took off and went around again. <laughs> As he came in, he, he, he landed quite nicely the next time, and my, my little son, 10 years old, came out of the plane like this. <laughs> and I happened to have a MGB convertible and strapped the skis on the back, and he said, let's go skiing. And I said, Bob, we can't do that. I, I, I cla you know, classes, we're going to miss classes. And he said, he was good in an argument. And so he said, Larry, if we go to school today, it's going to be a, like all the other days. Y you'll never remember it. What, what's, what's, what's different here? Three classes, it's all the same. But if we go skiing, you'll never forget it. And he was right every time. On behalf of all our family, we want to thank you for sharing today with us. And living with Bob, truly was an adventure. And sometimes it was a bit scary. So in 1986, no, in 1996, Bob and Andy and I went to New Zealand. Well, he said, we're gonna just take a little uh, rafting trip down the river. It turned out to be a class five river. Somebody had died on that trip the week before. There was a newlywed couple on that little raft, and the lady was so nervous when she found out that somebody had died the week before, she couldn't hold the panel. So the rest of us had to try to make up for that. You wore helmets, you went through this big hole, and you crashed, and you kept going. And the man ahead of me, his helmet hit me right on the face. Naturally, I got a bloody nose, but I had to just keep paddling. I will never forget that, and that was the last Class 5 rafting trip I did. 
to live well and touch the hearts of others is to make a lasting difference. Thank you for sharing this day with us. Parlett passed away at his home in September after a brief, brief battle with acute myeloid leukemia. He was 76. The Community Foundation of North Central Washington was, has awarded $216,950 in regional impact grants to 28 nonprofits across North Central Washington. The regional impact grant is an annual grant open to any 501c3 charitable nonprofit or public agency in Chelan, Douglas, or Okanagan counties done to support specific projects or general operations for programs that make a positive impact in their communities. Jennifer Dolge, Director of Donor Services and Communications with the Community Foundation of North Central Washington, says the foundation has a process in place to determine who receives a grant. This was one of our most competitive years for the Regional Impact Grant. We had 60 applicants, and um, the process for that is our staff and some board members do what we call site visits, and they visit every single organization who has applied for a grant in Chelan, Douglas, and Okanagan counties. So I think they uh, drive all over the region. I think they booked about 700 miles and visited everyone, got to know a little bit more about their grant request, their organization, so that they can make some really thoughtful decisions about who to fund and how much we're able to give each organization. Each of the grant recipients received a portion of their grant request as the amount of requests received uh, far exceeded the amount the foundation was able to award. That's where Dolge says the newly formed Give North Central Washington comes in. Each year we get requests that exceed, um, far exceed what we're able to give in the Regional in Impact Grant Award. So a few years ago we were able to come up with Give NCW, um, which is an opportunity for the nonprofits to continue raising money for their fundraising goal through a crowdfunding campaign that, that we host. So we've uh, awarded a portion of what their grant request is and they still need a little bit more to go. So Give NCW allows um, the public to come in and give $10 is a minimum donation or more to support um, the great things going on in the region. Among the 28 nonprofits that received the Regional Impact Grant include the Chelan Douglas Land Trust, Children's Home Society of Washington, Numerica Performing Arts Center, and the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. To donate, go to www.givencw.org and that donation period is from Thanksgiving until December 31st. Coming up, Pibus Market unveils its new logo, and the Port of Chelan County unveils its new property search website. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching NCW Life News. Having a relationship with your pediatrician is so important. Feeling that sense of trust, that is priceless. I tell everybody about CBCH. I love it there. When I make an appointment, I don't have to take an entire day off. As a working mom, my life is really busy. Family time is everything. That's what we all work towards. And I feel like CBCH respects that. Hi, I'm Blair from Works, your workout prescription. Have you ever started an exercise program and struggled to keep it going? So what if I told you that with this MyZone device, I could increase your chances of self-motivated exercise adherence by over 200%. Combine that with an exercise prescription specifically for your level of readiness, 
we'll increase it even more. And that's our new member success system. It's $99. It's exclusively at Works. It includes your MyZone belt. Works. YourWorkoutRx.com. Welcome back. And in other news, Chelan County PUD commissioners are considering establishing new rates for energy-saving LED streetlights that could lead to grants to cover the costs for small cities to install them. Andrew, Andrew Grassel, Energy Development and Conservation Manager, said changes in the energy charge for LED streetlights would mean savings of about $1.40 per light each month. We're targeting about $500,000 to $550,000 in funding from the Transportation Improvement Board. That funding source will provide up to 100% of the cost to retrofit streetlights in the cities that are less than $5,000. So Enyat, um, Kashmir, Leavenworth, Chelan, um, those areas. And then uh, what we plan to do is use some of this funding along with the PUD incentives to fund um, the other outlying areas. But that funding is contingent on the streetlight cost reductions to the cities that are being funded. The PUD installed test LED streetlights in five Wenatchee neighborhoods and received neutral to positive feedback from residents of those areas. Not only do LED lamps use less power, studies show they increase safety and reduce night sky effects. Three, uh, three information meetings will be scheduled next month to provide more information and hearing on the new rate will be held at the board's first meeting coming in January. Wenatchee's Pibus Public Market is supporting a new logo and motto. The changes were announced recently by Market General Manager Steve Robinson. When it started out, we weren't sure the degree of embracement that we would have and support from the community. Now we know that. Um, and I think it's uh, a time to identify kind of the motto in terms of what's Pipus about, what does it represent to the community, and then embed that motto into a logo that uh, reflects this great iconic building. So that's kind of the thinking, four and a half years, it's the right time to brand it, if you will. Robinson and Pibus board member Gil Sparks discussed the changes on a recent Wake Up Wenatchee Valley program with host Dan Koontz. We have two elements here. We have the new motto, and then we have the new logo. And as you may recall, when Mike and Joanne Walker began Pipe, it started with a five-person board. They have, it has grown now to a 21-person board. And in that growth, the board has decided they want to involve the community in some of the governance decisions of Pibus. So part of that process was to go out and get community input. And we started that with finding a motto. And in the concourse, we started asking people to give us suggestions for a motto. And we got literally hundreds, if not thousands, of suggestions, which then the marketing committee, headed up by Kristen Lodge, uh, evaluated, uh, weeded through, and ultimately came up with the new motto, which we, ref we feel reflects Pivus, where community meets. And we think that was a perfect match. The Pibus Market is gearing up for the Christmas holidays with the tree lighting ceremony slated for this Friday evening. The Port of Chelan County recently unveiled its new property search website called ChooseChelanCounty.com. Our hope is that every available piece of office commercial, industrial, real estate in the county is listed on it. So someone from within the county or from anywhere in the world can go look and see what's available to fit their needs to bring their business operations to Chelan County. That's Craig Larson, Director of Development for the Port, who also says the new website is much more than just a property search tool. The site's got some other great features to it. It's got demographic information, a lot of nice tools that you can use, even if it's a retail. You're gonna, I want to do a coffee shop in Kashmir. You could go in there and punch in the five-mile radius what the demographics are of any potential site you're looking at. So it's got a lot of functionality, it's not just property search. It's also helping you do a business plan, doing business research for all sorts of things. So we're very excited about it, and again, it helps our efforts to bring more economic activity here to the county. Again, that new website is called ChooseChelanCounty.com. 
You're watching NCW Life News. Coming up next, your sports update followed by today's feature story. That and much more still to come on NCW Life News. Stay with us. Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house featuring great family dining in downtown Chelan. We've got burgers, pub fare, and the best barbecue around. Try one of our award-winning sauces made fresh here in-house. So grab the whole gang and come on down. Stormy Mountain Brewing. Beer, barbecue, friends, and beer. Lake Chelan Mailboxes find solutions and the best price for all your shipping needs including UPS, FedEx, and the U.S. Postal Service. We offer a variety of services, including quality copies of all sizes, faxing, scanning, sending and receiving email, laminating, and notarizing. Enjoy browsing through our large selection of greeting cards. Lake Chelan Mailboxes supports our military, fire victims, and our community. Come see us at the Plaza in Lake Chelan. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. Well, a happy Tuesday. It was a tough one to watch last night. The Seahawks' 11-game winning streak on Monday Night Football came to an end, falling to the Atlanta Falcons 34-31 at CenturyLink Field. Blair Walsh's 52-yard field goal with seven seconds remaining fell about a yard short as Seattle tried for yet another last-minute come-from-behind victory. Russell Wilson scream seemingly scrambling for his life all night long. Completed 26 of 42 passes, 258 yards, two touchdowns, including a 29-yard strike to Doug Baldwin with 3.06 left. He then threw to Jimmy Graham for the two-point conversion to make it a three-point game. Coach Pete Carroll says it was just missed opportunities and untimely penalties that cost them the game last night. Seattle penalized nine times for 106 yards. A lot of opportunities on both sides of the ball, the things that happen, it seemed like a lot of big plays early, and uh, unfortunately they, the turnovers really, you know, gave them a great op, and they took advantage of it, and so we were playing from behind all night long. Um, I thought it was a really good, hard-fought game, both sides, both ways, and, uh, you know, as it does, it comes down to some critical situations, and we got to come through and make some plays, and, you know, come through and make the, you know, make the conversion that we need, and we didn't quite get it done. So, uh, I, I think the fight in these guys is just amazing, and, and, and you can count on it. You know what's going to happen. You know we're going to be right back to battling. Uh, Russell did a phenomenal job to get us right back in. The defense did a great job to give us that chance there at the end. And uh, you know, we played a heck of a ball game against the team. I think it's a really good team. You, I think I don't know if you guys can see it, but they're a loaded football team. And uh, they were fortunate enough to get that win. Now, a lot was made after the game and Seattle's choice to go for a fake field goal with seven seconds left in the first half. A play that was a shuttle pass to Luke Wilson stopped in the backfield. Carroll says they saw something they could possibly take advantage of. Yeah, it would have been a really good call if he made it. You know, it was something we saw we wanted to do. It was a terrific opportunity right where we wanted it. And, and uh, uh, they, the defense staff made a better play, you know, got in the backfield. He wasn't supposed to be there. We, you know, we figured we we're going to break it. It was a matter of giving ourselves another shot. If you don't score, keep it. If not, get out of bounds. Luke knew exactly what was up. And as it turned out, Seattle could have really used those three points. They could have scored by not going for the fake by the end of that game. And that's a 2020 hindsight. Seahawks are left with a 6-4 and four record and for now out of the playoff picture. Besides the controversy over the fake field goal attempt, a lot of post-game talk centered on the play of quarterback Russell Wilson. He says he loves playing in games like these, but the Seattle just didn't make that one more play. We played a great game. I thought we kept battling. I mean, we, the game came down to the wire there, 34 or 31 or whatever it was. So, um, you know, I, I thought that it showed the, the character of our team, and we kept hanging there. We kept answering back. We kept answering back. Guys make some great plays tonight. Um, unfortunately, they made one more play than us. Um, you know, we knew we were playing a good team tonight. Um, we knew it was going to be a battle. We knew it was going to probably uh, be a potentially a high scoring game and back and forth and everything else. And so, um, you know, I think for us, we, we move on to the next week. We, we still got a lot of things ahead of us. We had a really good chance to, um, I think, be first in the NFC West tonight and, and everything else. And unfortunately, we didn't. Um, but there's a lot more football to play. There's a lot more challenges ahead of us, and we can't get discouraged now. Seattle travels to San Francisco this Sunday at 105. Now, a surprise move today, the Seahawks wave veteran defensive tackle Dwight Freeney. Freeney was signed a month ago after Cliff Averill went down with a neck injury. In four games, Freeney made three tackles, all of those sacks. 
Seattle didn't immediately make any other roster moves, so that leaves them one shy of the 53-man limit as they prepare to take on San Francisco this weekend. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Granstrom on the NCW Life Channel. Grant, back to you. Thanks, Eric. Today was delivery day of Thanksgiving uh, gift baskets for the folks that serve Wenatchee Valley. Over the past month, Thanksgiving-themed gift, uh, gift baskets were decorated and filled with food by local donors and then distributed to families and individuals that are in need around the Wenatchee area. Last week on the NCW Life magazine, Jay Seebeck had Serve Wenatchee Valley Director Tom Knees on the program to discuss the gift baskets project and learn about some of the untold aspects of what it means to be living in poverty. We've got 400 baskets that I spoke about here in total, and then we have about 50 baskets that are for smaller families, somewhere between one, two, three, and the Lighthouse Christian Ministries is partnering with us to provide those baskets to our community. So shout out to, uh, to those folks that are uh, helping to meet that need with us as well. There's about 50. And then we have about 30 baskets that are uh, just families of one, that just singles, and we partner with the Salvation Army with those. So we'll sign them up and uh, and then direct them to the Salvation Army to, to get those baskets. So it's, uh, it's multiple family sizes that we're looking to, uh, to be able to help and facilitate. You guys aren't just handing out. You're trying to bring people into you know, the community as well as you know, give back in a way. Right. Is that right? And, and really, uh, part, part of poverty that is perhaps not talked about quite as much, we have a tendency to think of poverty in terms of material possessions, uh, money, but, but really, um, another side of poverty is the relational um, capital that families don't have. And one of the ways that I, I ask this question, I would ask this question of you, if you were short on rent or utilities this month and asked you to put a list of people down that you could go to and ask if you could find help, my guess is that list would be fairly long. Yeah. My list would be fairly long. Mm -hmm. We have uh, folks that come in that have no one. Right. There's no relational uh, capacity to be able to reach out and find someone that could help them at this moment of time. And so when, when it becomes uh, that level of, of desperation, uh, then we simply want to be known as a safe place to come. We do an intake and assess the needs that, uh, that exist in, in their family figure out the best ways to be able to facilitate and help them and help them to be able to transition from this momentary crisis into the next phase in their life. And what we do is we add relational capital to their life. We'll be back in just a moment with the recap of some of today's stories and your complete local weather forecast right after this. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Hey folks, Carrie from Blueberry Hills. A chill is in the air and it's a perfect time for some old fashioned comfort food like our amazing Eggs Benedict, chicken fried steak, French dips, soups made from scratch, or fruit pies fresh from the oven. The crowds might be gone, but we're still here for you folks. So bring an appetite and a friend to Blueberry Hills in Manson, where you pick, you sit, you eat, and you visit. Open Wednesday through Sunday from eight to three, wildaboutberries.com. Time now for a recap of some of our top stories. The Community Foundation of North Central Washington has awarded $216,950 in regional impact grants to 28 nonprofits across North Central Washington. The regional impact grant is an annual grant open to any 501c3 charitable nonprofit or public agency in Chelan, Douglas, or Okanagan counties to support specific projects or general operations for programs that make a positive impact in their communities. Chelan County PUD commissioners are considering establishing new rates for energy-saving LED streetlights that could lead to grants to cover the costs for small cities to install them. 
Andrew Grassel, Energy Development and Conservation Manager, said changes in the energy charge for LED streetlights would mean savings of about $1.40 per light each month. The PUD installed test LED street lights and lights in five Wenatchee neighborhoods and received neutral to positive feedback from residents in those areas. And now your weather forecast for north central Washington. Before we get to that, let's once again take a look outside our very wet weather window. And we saw rain showers throughout the day here in the Wenatchee Valley. And the same goes for almost all of Washington State as a series of storm uh, systems move through. We can expect wet and mild weather today through parts of Thanksgiving Day as a series, as I mentioned, of storm systems bring several rounds of precip to all of Washington. You can see that huge flow of precipitation moving up from the southwest. It was called the Pineapple Express because of its southwest origins. It will also warm us up over the next couple days. And one thing that's important, if travel is part of your plans today, snow levels will be between five and 6,000 feet through Thursday. That allows motorists to travel over mainly wet roadways. That's good news. The heaviest precipitation will be from late this morning through Wednesday morning, and then will decrease a little bit by Wednesday afternoon. Thursday will also be a bit of a wet start to our Thanksgiving, and then just some windy conditions later on in the afternoon. Friday, once again, maybe a shower or two. Break on Saturday before once again we see some of that wet stuff move in on Sunday where our snow levels will drop to about 3,000 feet. So be aware of that as you travel home for that Thanksgiving holiday. Let's take a look at your forecast now. And tonight we can expect rain to continue. 70% chance tonight, 40 are overnight low. A 60% chance for Wednesday rain showers and 48. For Thursday, all the way up to 55 degrees with windy conditions during during the day and then we level out a little bit temperature wise in the mid to upper 40s through the weekend and into Monday with a chance for showers on Saturday, Sunday night and once again on Monday morning. We leave you tonight with a video that will tug at your heartstrings. <laughs> And if you have a video of the day you'd like to see on NCW Life News, message us on our Facebook page at the NCW Life channel. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. Also, tune in to NCW Life Channel tomorrow morning for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with host Dan Kuntz and News with Steve Hare. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. This has been NCW Life News on the NCW Life Channel. For more news, log on to ncwlife.com, like us on Facebook, and follow NCW Life Channel on Twitter. Travel enhances your life in every way. Let the travel professionals at Journey Travel and Tours help you plan that dream vacation. Don't leave the important details to those nameless, faceless online agencies. At Journey Travel and Tours, our goal is to build relationships that last a lifetime. And when you do need help, we have a 24-hour helpline that is routed to one of the agents in our office. When you think travel, think Journey Travel and Tours. It's where your journey begins. Like us on Facebook and you could be one of our monthly winners. Weekly, weekly, weekly. For the newest tech, coolest tech, and the craziest tech stories available on the interwebs, tune in for your weekly tech update right here on the NCW Life Channel. Thursday night, hockey night on the NCW Life Channel. It all begins at 7 o'clock with a call of the wild and Clarkie's Corner. 
Then it's non-stop hockey action with the voice of the Wild, Arch Ecker. Join us as the Wild battle the rest of the BCHL. Thursday night is hockey night on the...